Admittedly, when I see that a series gets a sequel anime adaptation, while I am excited for that particular series, there's a side of me that gets a little depressed that certain shows that I really do love don't get the same treatment. So what better way to deal with this sadness than to do a top 10 list of anime that need a sequel badly? As with all my top lists, I definitely encourage people to go down in the comments, let me know what series you think need a sequel, because that's what I find the most enjoyment out of is seeing what other people believe that need to get these sequels and not just myself. So with all that said, let's jump right into it. This is no particular order, just a list of 10 anime titles that need sequels. But my first one that I have on my list is, of course, Spice and Wolf. <laughs> what list like this would not be complete without Spice and Wolf? But yeah, this is a series that took me a while to get into. It essentially follows a guy that is a traveling merchant. At some point, he runs into a harvest god named Holo, and the two of them travel around from town to town doing trades and really getting into the economy and the tricks of the trade that would go into, you know, trading goods. And this series, even though at first was daunting because of how much economic stuff was involved in it, I grew to love it, its trade, and the characters, especially in the actual series. Now, you could say the series is kind of old enough to the point where it probably needs the fruits basket treatment where they'll start over from square one and readapt from the beginning all the way in which I would actually like that despite not so much the animation issues but more so in what I noticed when I started reading the light novel series there's a lot of inner dialogue that the animation never really gets into that is going through Lawrence's head that I think accentuate him as a character that I didn't see in the anime adaptation so I would prefer them to start over from square one, but it's not necessary. I just want them to continue to adapt the series because, let's be honest, this is a series that just doesn't seem to leave the fandom. It constantly keeps coming back. They keep re-releasing the light novel. It keeps selling. They keep doing collector's editions, figures. This is such a popular series, and I wonder if it's maybe just so niche and the fandom that is under it is small but strong then that's the reason why it keeps alive, but it just, it needs to come back. It really does, and it needs a full adaptation, seriously, at this point. So yeah, Spice and Wolf, please. <laughs> Finish the adaptation. For the next one I have is Noragami. This is a series that I absolutely love. It is a series that I jumped into uh, not knowing anything about the series when it was adapted, and I loved it a lot. Even to the point that when they did the second season, I immediately rushed out and got the manga all the way up to what was currently released. And I absolutely love this series so much. It's a series about a, a girl who ends up running into this, uh, this god named Yato, and the Yato kind of ends up pulling her into the world of the gods and how they have control over the world and the, the effects that the two have upon each other. And I will say this is one that I'm kind of wondering how they will handle adapting beyond the second season just because they did technically adapt a certain thing about the Shikis that was a little different. In the manga, it actually specifies that the Shikis themselves, when they battle, they play off of looking down upon their opponent. And this is something that wasn't really translated into the anime adaptation properly, and I'm wondering if that will affect the story going forward because it's there's a lot of emphasis on that particular aspect when it gets into some fights later on. So maybe it's something they can slightly change in order to fix that. I don't know if it's a, I would say it's an error, but <laughs> they might run into problems with that. But I love the series so much and I, and I reading forward into the manga, it gets into some crazy stuff that I'm sure is going to be very difficult to adapt, but it's stuff that's really powerful, and I'm I'm so looking forward to it continuing. The next one in my list is Claymore, and this is a series that definitely needs a lot fixed with it. It's kind of in that same vein as something like uh, Full Metal Alchemist, where they technically change a lot of things the very end of the anime adaptation, so they're going to have to do a little bit of, you know, changes to what happened there in order to make it fit and continue on with the manga. But it is a series that I loved so much that I went out and got the manga, and it gets so much more crazier later on in the series, and it's stuff that I just want to see adapted into a normal form. Again, similar to Spice and Wolf, it is more older, but not old enough, and I think the old one does still hold up to today's standards, and I would just love to see it continue on. It is, it, it is a series that's kind of hard to follow in the manga just because of how many of these claymores there are, and I'm curious if that's something that could possibly be easier to follow with the anime adaptation, but I, I love the direction it went. It had such great character moments later on 
that just for the people that don't read the manga and don't read the source materials, it's stuff that I want them to kind of experience. So yeah, definitely Claymore needs to get more adapted. I'll probably get some heat on this one, but uh, <laughs> Grimgar Fantasy and Ash. This is a series that I I love to death. And I know that it, it had a lot of kind of, uh, I guess, negativity hitting it when it was first adapted, mainly around the idea that, yeah, No Names, the band had a lot of insert music points in there and it kind of had those music points lead on a little bit too long. I love No Name. I think they're fantastic and I was perfectly fine with the work that they did and putting that music in there and really accentuating the scenes. And it's a story that I love to death because it's an isekai slice of life, really. It's it's isekai where you don't have superpowers, you don't have all these, you know, great abilities. But you're thrown in the world and you're dealing with the day-to-days that normally isekais don't deal with. It is the, you know, you have to get a job. You don't have much money. You're dealing with trying to wash your own clothes. It's it's all the, it's, like I said, it's a isekai slice of life. <laughs> and, and, and a very, very gritty slice of life. An experience that they aren't living it up in this other world. And it was a series that I love to death. I love the characters. And enough that I went out and got the source material. I haven't gotten caught up to it because I want to reread through the whole thing. But it it deserves more attention, and I and I would love to see it adapted more. Next one on my list is A Sentence of a Bookworm. This is a series that I absolutely love to death, and I would love to see it continue on. Granted, it's already gotten a second season, which is thankful, but it's kind of been some time between that second season and now. So I'm hoping that they're not going to just let it be, and then this becomes one that never gets further adaptations from me on this point. But... It deserves it. It was easily one of my favorite animes of the year in the full, the two seasons that it was released. Uh, me and Chris on the podcast were, were just screaming at the tallest mountains for people to check out the series. It, again, is another isekai, but in this particular one, again, she's kind of put in more of a... In the commoner's area, she's very poor. She's a very sickly body that she's put inside of. We kind of, you know, there's there's a thought process that even the, the body that she was put inside of was a body that passed away just because of how sickly she was. And she's just kind of striving to get a book. That's all she wants. She just wants to read a book because she was a bookworm in her previous life. And just everything that she goes through, it's just a great series. It has such some heartwarming moments in it. And I just would love to see it continue on. But next one I have is Land of Lustrous. This is a series that caught me off guard completely. It is a full CGI series. Uh, there was a lot of talks about the fact that they even had to build the assets for this work way prior in advance and you can tell when you watch the series that they put a lot of work into these character designs and making them look like gems but it because essentially this this series takes place in kind of a unknown world where all these gem people that all different gems different strengths of obviously because some gems are stronger than other gems and they fight against these weird almost angel angelic beings that arrive every now and then that try to steal them away and it kind of, I don't want to get too into spoilers, but it really gets into some crazy stuff about this particular world that I just am totally fascinated by. And I so want to see more of this world and see more of the story. And again, I, as much work as they put into the assets, I would hope that they would want to do a sequel. But it's been so long since that came out and I'm starting to lose hope on it. The next one on my list is Children of Wales. This is a series that aired on Netflix. I jumped into it because I was kind of interested in the art style itself. And I was completely blown away by the world that it was creating. It kind of sets this story up with a bunch of villagers that are living on this secluded island out in the middle of nowhere. And as the story progresses, you start to learn more about the history of this island and the actual existence of people outside of the island. And the way that it starts unraveling that stuff is, yeah, while very tragic, (laughs) really starts to give you a perspective of this really grand scale of this world itself and the people within it, the beliefs they have. And ultimately unfortunately (laughs) leaves you on a very big cliffhanger at the very end that opens up the world even more and it it honestly it frustrated me a lot that they put this last episode within the series because it feels like it just goes hey come check out the rest of the story and the source material but like i said it it kind of opens things up and it and it has me craving more i want more of this world i want to see what this other stuff is they're trying to show in the series and so, yes, it, it, it needs more. It needs more adaptation. For my next one I have is Seraph the End. Now, this is a series. Now, hold on. This is a series that I actually didn't like early on. 
I I loved how it opened. I loved Sawano Hiroyuki's music. I I kind of liked the art style and the and the visual effects and everything they put in there. But it quickly turned into this really dumb school thing. And thankfully, it broke out of that. And while I did have my negatives on the first season and how it opened up and how it kind of got us into things, the second season really did sell me on the series. And it was a series that I just started craving more of. Enough that I was about to get the the source material, but didn't get around to that, unfortunately. But I, I just love the second season, and it just made me crave more of this series. Cruel Tepes, I want more Cruel Tepes. <laughs> Cruel Tepes is amazing. But uh, yeah, it, it, it needs more, and it has the potential of being a really solid shonen. And we thought that was going to be the case with the first couple seasons, but unfortunately, they just kind of let it be. And I'm 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 concerned that's because it didn't see much benefit from having an adaptation, because typically that's why they adapt the stuff is to sell the manga. But it needs more, and I would love to see more. I want more Cruel Tepes. <laughs> My next one is Vinland Saga. Now this is a Seemingly fresh series. It hasn't been too long since the last season was completed, but it also is a case where you start to see that, you know, two or so year gap, and then you start getting concerned that they're not going to get continued adaptations. And let's be honest, this first season was literally a prologue. It was an opening. It literally says, okay, now the journey actually starts. And it's like, well, wait, <laughs> you're going to adapt the rest of it? Is this it? You're just going to give me the opening? <laughs> But yeah, Vinland Saga so needs more adaptation. Now, granted, I I wasn't so sold on the series, technically. I thought it was beautifully adapted. They had such incredible directing, incredible scenes, uh, some great character moments, some great little side stories. But actually, my, folk, my interest was really surrounding one aspect of a certain character. And for that character, I was sold on the series. And it, it kind of has me more soul on the idea of a series going forward just because of how the characters are going to be maturing going forward and yeah i am i'm absolutely sold on it. i cannot wait for more of the series uh i am again pretty tempted to just go get the source material just so i continue it on but i would love to see them continue to adapt it because they were doing an incredibly beautiful job with the series and i just cannot wait for more for my last of the 10 anime series that need a sequel adaptation of course this would not be complete without berserk now a proper berserk adaptation let's be let's be very clear let's not go back to the that cgi stuff that unfortunately happened let's let's go back let's let's reverse time let's continue where the first adaptation ended off and let's give it a proper adaptation from that point on not that crummy cgi stuff yeah i, I think even in the wake of kentaro miura passing away it, it needs it more than ever the fandom the fandom's craving it the people crave it I, I think it's, yeah, it might need some time for things to kind of, you know, settle down beyond his passing. But respectfully, I think this is something that needs to have a continuation for his legacy. It needs to continue and it needs to be continued properly. It needs to be continued with proper animation and proper directing and everything put into it. It, it, it is a series that has inspired so many people It has it has inspired so many different mediums, different artworks, gaming, art movies, characters in general, this guy has inspired so much and I, I just don't know, I don't want it to end where it kind of ends. Now granted it's unfortunate that the manga itself will never end. I'm assuming that probably the license holders are probably gonna find somebody to continue his work. Hopefully he had something wrote down that they can continue off of or somebody that was, you know, working under him that knows the story that he was planning on telling, but either way, I I it I don't see it being fully adapted at this point, but we need a continuation, and again, we need a proper continuation from the end of the last adaptation that was done in proper 2D animation, but yeah, Berserk, for sure, needs <laughs> needs a continuation, for sure. But yeah, that's my 10 anime that need sequel anime adaptations. Uh, some honorable mentions, Nobunaga's Concerto, I really love that series, and we've never seen a continuation of that. The Art Club has a problem. Uh, Snow White with the Red Hair definitely would be great. Yona the Dawn equally with that one. I think Snow White with the Red Hair even more so. Smile Down the Runway. Bottom tier character, Tomozaki. School Live. Yeah, definitely School Live. Definitely needs <laughs> more adaptation there. I ended up watch, uh, reading the entire series. Uh, Flowers of Evil. Even though I didn't watch the original one because it was rotoscoped, um, I was kind of considering going back and watching that. But I would kind of hope that they would do a continued adaptation before I even did that rather than just 
get that full first story. High School of the Dead, that was one that was for the longest time kind of hoped that would get continued adaptation, even though it's totally dumb. <laughs> it's a dumb series. It's, it's dumb for a reason. Jimmy and Mary, I think that one needs to be changed as well because I think they anime original that one, if I'm, if I remember correctly. Welcome to Ballroom would be fantastic as well, but uh, yeah, I need to stop. <laughs> but yeah, you got my top 10. Uh, like as always, like I said before, Leave down in the comment which uh, 10 anime or, or if any that you would want to see continued adapted. But I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this 10 list of anime that need further adaptation. Uh, as always, if you did like this video, leave a like, comment, share, subscribe if you haven't already. And I thank you all for watching and y'all take care.